I'm from the Logan Martin Church of Christ in Pell City, Alabama, and I know a lot of you from back when Roebuck was Roebuck, and now you're Deerfoot, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I was told we only have about five to ten minutes to do this, and then we'll move into our classes later. So we're in Matthew chapter 22 for just a second as we enter our devotional period. You know, in the very beginning of time, when God created the heavens and the earth in Genesis chapter 1, it was very simple. You know, it just seemed like at that time, really the only thing that man had to worry about was making sure that you follow God. Here's Adam and Eve in the very beginning, and while they're there in the very beginning, they're there with God. They could talk with God, they could see God, and really all they had to worry about in their life was doing what God would have them to do. Genesis chapter 3 comes very quickly in the progression of the books of the Bible and in the chapters of the Bible. And Genesis chapter 3 verse number 1 begins by saying this, The serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. And we know from that point on that sin entered into the world when Eve partook of that fruit. And then Adam partook of that fruit. And God condemned man in so many ways. And it took Jesus Christ to be able to bring us back to God. But it's interesting to me that the devil has used the same tactics ever since the very beginning. You know, it was where the devil told Eve, I want you to eat of this tree that God said you should not eat of. And, and despite the fact that in Genesis chapter 1, when you look at the account of the Garden of Eden, we're told that everything there is perfect for food. It's perfect for them to look at. It's this beautiful utopia on earth. The devil used that old game. He said, I want you to look at the one thing God said you don't touch. And I want you to touch that one thing, even though you have everything that you need. The way the devil works today. And Matthew chapter 22 is, is one of my favorite accounts in the Bible. And beginning in verse number 36 is where we'll start. It says, There was a lawyer that asked him a question, testing him, saying, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Now, I think it's interesting. He's referring back to the old law of Moses. And out of the 613 commandments that are written in the law of Moses, he's asking Jesus, he says, What's the greatest thing that I need to do in my life? What do I need to follow? In my life, out of all 613 that are written, what's most important? You know, I, verse number 37 comes quickly, and I, I don't get the impression at all that Jesus had to guess about what the answer was going to be. I don't think that Jesus had to guess about what he needed to say. And I don't believe he hesitated for a moment when he spoke in verse number 37. Because in the very beginning he said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. From the very beginning, God's intention was that we love him with everything that we have. From the very beginning, God's got to be first in our lives. In everything we do, God's got to be first. The way that we view the world has to be through God. You know, it reminds me of a situation we find in Numbers chapter 13, and there's 12 spies that are there in Numbers chapter 13. And they go up to spy out the land that we know of as the promised land. And it just interests me because their job was to go and to see how God would have them to overtake this land. It was never their job to go and to determine if the land was theirs. God had already promised them the land. God's promised us heaven. And so 10 of those spies come back and they have a report like this. They say, we're not able to do it. The land's too big. The inhabitants are too large. There's nothing we can do to overtake that land. But there's two, Joshua and Caleb, who come out and they say, we're well, over, well able to overtake this land. You know, when we come into the book of Joshua just a little bit later and we look at Joshua chapter 14, Joshua's there and Caleb is speaking. And he says, I was 40 years old when we went into the promised land. I was 40 years old when God made this promise back in Numbers chapter 13. And he says, and here I am 45 years later, 85 years old. I'm as strong as I've ever been. I'm still well able to do the job. God has kept me alive this day to fulfill the promise that he gave me way back in Numbers chapter 13. And then we have Joshua in Joshua chapter 24, verse number 15, proven to have followed God even in the difficult times. And he says, you can dwell and you can, you can serve any gods you want to, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. These men have proven that God was first in their lives and God has to be first in our lives. If God's first in our life and everything we do, we have no concerns about whether or not God's going to fulfill the promises that he's made. God is a promise-keeping God. But then number two, when we look at this book in this passage here, and we get down to verse number 38, you know, the lawyer tests him and he asks him the question saying, what's the greatest commandment? And he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is the first commandment. But he said, and here's the second one, and it's like it. You shall love your neighbors yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, serving God is important, but serving others is just as important. It's important that we serve God. God has to be first. We've got to put other people ahead of ourselves. That's hard for a guy like me sometimes. Struggle with that. 
I'm reminded in John chapter 13 when Jesus gets down and he washes the disciples' feet. And, and as he gets down and he, and he begins to wash his, the feet. And even Peter, he says, you're not going to wash my feet, Lord. And Jesus says, if I don't wash your feet, you have nothing to do with me. And, and here we get to the very end of that chapter. And Peter says, no, 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 no. You wash my whole body. But we get to the very end and, and, and the Lord says this. You've seen this. Now you go out and you do likewise. Just serving other people. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5 tells us that we're to have the mind in us that Christ had. Let this mind be in you which was found also in Christ Jesus. It's important that we think like Christ. But you know, all I can figure in my life, if I just think about it real quick, and I think about these verses that we've read right here, Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40, is that when I serve God first with all my heart, I'm reminded that Jesus, while He was on earth, did all things that were pleasing to His Father. When I serve other people, and I look at passages like Philippians chapter 8 that talk about how Jesus humbled himself. When I humble myself to serve other people, I become more and more like my God. And then Luke says this in Luke chapter 9, verse number 23. If any man wants to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And we serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God who loves us so much that he sent his son to Calvary. We serve an awesome God who gave his son to die for us that we can live with him for eternity. God has reconciled us to him through Jesus Christ, but it takes our obedience to be reconciled. If you're here tonight and you're not a member of the Lord's church, what a wonderful opportunity you have. You have a great number here. So many that will pray for you and with you. If you've heard the word and you believe it, you're willing to repent of your sins, confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God, be buried with him in baptism, and rise to walk in newness of life. You can leave here today something you may not have been when you walked in a Christian. Maybe you're like me sometimes. We go back to Genesis chapter 1 when things were so beautiful. Then we look at Genesis chapter 3 where the devil says, just don't touch those things that God told you to touch. And it's hard for us to get our priorities in line sometimes. Maybe you're here and you're like me and you struggle with that. Who comes first, who comes second, and who comes third? If you have a need and we can help you, we ask that you come now. While together we stand and while we sing.